Um, Payal, people who want to start a fashion business, any particular structure that they should follow? Uh, you know, I didn't follow one, but yes, over the last 25 years, I've learned that first, I think you need to start with a clear identity as to what you want to do. A lot of people get confused and like, they want to just start a brand, but they don't know what product they want to specialize in. It's very important to enter the market with one key product. And you can always build on it. And the second big big advice of mine is to start with a business plan like people like just think that oh you know I'll get few tailors I'll get a master I'll start you know supply to a few stores I don't think it works like that anymore if you want to keep it as a homegrown you know business that's fine but if you really want to start a brand I think you should start with some kind of a like outline of a business plan when you say business plan what all should it entail so you know I tell you a funny anecdote we started a store in New York and uh, we thought that uh, it would be what rent and you know sales staff and like maybe a few overheads but as we were working on the store we realized there was city tax we had to pay the city to clean the garbage we had to put a, a tax for the signage we had to pay for uh, the cell phone to be a business account that we had to pay insurance for the whole building because in Manhattan the stores are at the bottom these were hidden costs that we were not aware of so when I say business plan I mean you know writing down all the kinds of investments you need to start the business whether it's like the store the manager just everyone you'll need to run a business what will be your expenses then what kind of uh, projected uh, income you will have in terms of like okay I think I can and you have to be realistic so like you're not faking these numbers for anybody else but yourself so if you're not realistic about it you're gonna set yourself up for failure what I would say is like definitely 10% of your uh, budget should go into marketing and building the brand uh, maybe 50% of the you know um, I would say profit can go into reinvestment and then you must have like something which you save up for a rainy day a minimum like as we saw in the pandemic there were businesses that couldn't survive and one of the reasons why we could was because we were conservative in our approach towards you know the business I never opened big fancy stores I never went all out with the interiors and the decor we always like in Hindi we say right jitni chadar utna fehlao like how much we could afford we did that and I think having at least a year's worth of expenses of your business uh, kept away is very important to save that because we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but I do feel like, you know, maybe I've been too conservative, I don't know. But I've seen it be um, beneficial to me and it has succeeded for me, which is why that's like my thing. There are people who come in with full on investment, spend that money and then they say, okay, we look at return on investment in three years or five years that's fine too if you have that bandwidth in, bandwidth and the backing right but we started with our own money so that's how we did it so what is the best part of being in the business of fashion and design uh, for me uh, growing I mean uh, growing in this business I would say like my love for design which is why I can wake up every single day and do the non glamorous job which I just need everybody to know how unglamorous this job is which People just see us at events and parties and celebrities and you know fashion shows but that is the tip of the iceberg you know the remaining iceberg is being in factories dealing with delays uh, constantly firefighting I mean I'm more of a firefighter than a designer right uh, I, w I mean I would say like um, uh, just the passion for creating something that keeps me going every day I'm also half Marwadi and I love the business of fashion so I also think the numbers keep me going and the challenge to do something new and different every time and what's the worst part about being in the business of fashion and design uh, I think just the sense of uh, being answerable I mean at the end of the day the label has my name on it yeah. and I'm not going to be like oh Karigar ne kharaab kiya <laughs> or Dyer ne you know it's my job it's my responsibility so even though I have so many people working in the business and so many people supporting it and so many people behind the scenes but eventually I'm answerable and it's my name on the line and that's a little bit uh, stressful because it creates some kind of anxiety for sure I've dealt with it uh, as you grow older you learn to be become a little bit more um, you know comfortable with that kind of responsibility but I think that's the worst part has online made the business easier or tougher because now the same person has so many more options somebody can copy a design and sell yeah. it so easily yeah or has it made your stuff more accessible to people out there you know so um, I think um, 
the digital world is a double sided sword but i have always like i've never looked at something in a negative way for me everything has been like whatever my situation is i want to make the most of it and adapt to it so i would say that i feel like online has helped us i don't want to look at it as a negative thing we have more uh, points of sale we have uh, more visibility as a brand uh, we have reached out to small small parts of the world which we couldn't have ever imagined uh, yes copying happens yes a lot of competition is there but you know that's what a survivor is right as a brand i mean after next year we celebrate 25 years and ambika you've been a part of our journey for a long time so i would say that you'll understand that if to survive 25 years you have had to overcome those challenges so when someone copies our brand uh yes i i'm honestly i don't look at it as flattery i look at it as pure robbery but my challenge is to make something newer and better and be ahead of the curve when uh, i have competition i'm like great you know you can't exist in a monopoly the more the competition the more i'm pushed to do newer and more exciting things so i think of it as a good thing all right now going back to the business of fashion what kind of timeline should all the young designers uh, give themselves in the business to break even i would say about 3 to 5 years is what i would say invest uh, a lot of people are very impatient the younger generation especially uh, guys we pounded the pavement for 25 years so it's uh, and I, i have even more senior designers than me who are still going strong and i love their passion for their work and they are my inspiration so uh, i would say you know just put your head down and work hard and don't worry about the future and don't worry about you know how soon am i going to get on the cover of a magazine how soon am i going to get a finale at fashion week i have still not gotten those two things but i am not at all affected by it i'm doing really well and i'm really happy with what i'm doing and i think that's important so but 3 to 5 years to start even like seeing some kind of visibility and breaking even in terms of the financial investment and when should somebody realize that you know it's a lost cause we need to <laughs> exit this business i mean let's not get depressed let's just exit and not lose more you know i'll tell you one thing it's very hard to tell someone who's really passionate about cre- creating that dude you don't have it in you so i don't know how to i work with a lot of students i don't know how to say that but i think the numbers say the story and even we as a brand look at so many things that we do and say this isn't working you know like if we have invested so much time effort energy in a certain vertical and we feel so i think you have to follow the you have to really look at the financial numbers because eventually we are doing a business you know one thing is to be like if you're making fashion as a pure art and passion then please do it as a hobby but if you are trying to make it into a business and let the numbers give you that answer don't wait for us to tell you hey we don't like your product you know what i mean let that be your guide um when would a designer or a young brand know they have done well or they are going to make it big what are the signs i i you know it's called the tipping point and i think you know you just know you don't have to be told uh, first of all you see it in your numbers again like i say numbers are your uh, holy grail you have to follow that uh you'll also start seeing it in the kind of uh, interest you get in your brand whether it's from uh, editors or from bloggers or from uh media or from like uh, celebrities you know sourcing requests uh, i think you know you just know and like i said if all else fails please look at your balance sheet and you will know you know now you based in bombay uh, you are in fashion you are where bollywood is do you think bollywood stylists are the key ring leaders for any brand uh you know uh, they are very helpful and i would definitely say they have helped a lot of brands gain a lot of visibility especially a lot of unknown and underground brands and that's why i would say yes they're very important but having said that i have to tell you that it uh, to me the customer has become very smart and is very intelligent uh, we don't always get the maximum likes or the maximum visibility or maximum sales from a celebrity worn garment sometimes a bride i post a bride's picture and that becomes a best seller not some celebrity who has worn the same outfit so you have to remember that that i think it you know in the new digital world where we don't have advertisements we don't have newspapers magazines as much as we did before yeah. and we're relying on a different kind of marketing i would say they are very important but they're not the be all because i know designers who come to me saying oh you we live in a certain city we don't have access to these stylists what do we do and i still know designers who are in those same very cities who are not on any celebrities and are doing phenomenal business so i don't think that they are the be all and end all they are important part of marketing and uh, spreading the message but no you can even do without it 
Uh, last question. You are in Bombay, part of all these important conversations. You just mentioned it that magazines, etc., are becoming redundant. Where do you advertise? So, going ahead, what is uh, what are the different exciting points of uh, ads and marketing that you see? You know, passion. Uh, yes. Sorry. So, when I moved back to India in 2010, the first conversation I had with my PR company was that I think magazines are going to be dead and what wow. are we going to do about it yeah i think i had already kind of seen it coming because i lived in new york yeah. and i started to give more importance to online content and uh, you know creating content and honestly it has paid off as a brand because we were slightly ahead of the curve i just think content creation and marketing and word of mouth is first of all you have to understand with instagram and portals and you know apps like that the designers own their own narrative now yeah, we don't true. have to rely on someone that else talking true, about yeah. us we can talk about ourselves uh, also the consumer has become you know so aware and is so available you can have a direct b2c conversation now you know right. i don't have to go via the middleman uh but having said that we we do have marketing spends so sadly we are spending it on things like google adwords and you know boosting our posts and stuff but i would say i would spend my money on content creation if i had to give one piece of advice or say where it would really the the content creation is going to be the future so i don't think media is dead i just think the format has changed that's it you know we still need that conversation uh we still need to have people review our collections and give people their point of views but uh in a different way you know something which is more exciting for the future lovely thank you thank you